We previously talked about how to do uh, electron configurations. And remember that tells us uh, how many electrons are in each uh, energy level and subshell within that energy level, right? And so for example, if we had a uh, helium, which is atomic number one, which has one electron, that electron is in the 1s, so we'd have 1s1, it would be its electronic configuration. What we're going to talk about now is orbital diagrams, which gives us a little bit more information. And an orbital diagram is just a way of showing a little picture for each of the orbitals. And for example, this would be a picture of what's going on in our 1s orbital, right? And so there are a couple of rules we need to follow when we're drawing these orbital diagrams. Is one is that the off-bow principle, which was the same one that we used when doing our electronic configuration, is that the lowest energy level is filled first. So <clears throat> this one electron from helium is going to go in a 1s orbital because that's the lowest energy level. And the other one is a Pauli exclusion principle, which uh, broadly says no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. And really what that's telling us is if we put two electrons in one of these boxes, they have to have opposite spin. So one has to be spin up and one spin down because if they were both spin down, they would both be in a 1s orbital with the same spin, which would mean they have the same uh, quantum numbers. So just think of it as the two electrons have to be opposite if they're in the same box here. And the other is Hund's rule, which says that a de 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 degenerate orbitals should have a maximum number of unpaired electrons. And this is more like, a, I'd consider the sharing rule, that if you have three boxes with the same energy level, you have to put one electron in each box before anyone gets two. So <clears throat> it's, it's within that, uh, that uh, sub orbital that you want to spread them out as much as possible. Right? And so how we draw these electrons in this orbital diagram is just an arrow pointing up or pointing down. And so this would show that for this helium atom, it has one electron in the 1s orbital and it's spin up. It could also be spin down, but we're going to draw it as spin up. Oh, now we messed up already. This should be hydrogen. Right, so if it was a uh, helium, it would have two electrons, and <clears throat> right, the two electrons, according to Offbau, are going to go in the lowest level first. So that would be the 1s2, would be its uh, electronic configuration. So we would need to draw just one box. All we need is the 1s box to contain both of these. So they're both going to go in here, but because of poly, one of them has to be spin up and the other one has to be spin down. So we would draw arrows in the opposite direction, showing that one of those two electrons is spin up and one is, is spin down. Right? And so if we, uh, you know, expand out a little bit, say we go to, uh, to boron, which is just moving down the periodic table a little bit. So now we have uh, five electrons that we need to to put out there, right? And so this 1s can fit 2, this 2s can fit 2, but now we have to go all the way to a 2p to fit the next one in. So this one would be 1s2, 2s2, and we have one more electron. It has to be up in the 2p orbital, right? So now we're going to need more boxes to fit in these electrons for our orbital diagram. So we're going to need a, a 1s box, we're going to need a 2s box, and then we're going to need a 2p box, right? And so remember that the that the p is uh, a <clears throat> has a three three, and one is in the x direction, one is in the y direction, and one is in the z. So we could fit six electrons: two in our x, two in our y, and two in our z. Right, and so now we need to put out our five electrons. So the first two go in the 1s, that's our lowest, and they have to be opposite, right? And Offbau says the next lowest, 2s, so we can fit two in there. And due to poly, they have to be equal and opposite. Not equal and opposite, just opposite. And <clears throat> then we get to the p orbital, and we only have one left, and we'll just put him in the first box there. Right, and so that's how we would do something like, uh, like boron. <clears throat> so now, if we uh, 
go a little bit further, say we go all the way out to oxygen. So clean this out. So we go to oxygen, right? And now we have uh, two, four, six, eight, we're the eighth element. So we have eight electrons that we have to put out there, right? And so now we're still gonna be here in the P, right? Because we have it two in our one S, two in our two S, and that leaves us uh, with the rest to go in that uh, two P. Actually, that's not element eight, I'm sorry. Don't have my glasses on, I can't see that far. Uh, oh, that was right, never mind. All right, it is element eight. Usually distracted, right? So we have 1s, 2, 2s, 2, and uh, 2p, 4. Right. So this is our electronic configuration. Now let's do our orbital diagram. So again, each of these boxes represents an orbital. The lowest energy is 1s. The next lowest is our 2s. And then we get to our 2p, which has a px, a py, and a pz, so we could fit six in there. All right, so we put our little designation under there, 2p. All right, and off Bob says we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna fill the lowest level first, and Polly says they have to have opposite spins, so we take one, two, put them in the 1s, put two in the 2s, and now we get out to our 2p, right? And so this is where Hun's rule takes over, because all three of these p orbitals have the, the same energy level. They're just orientated differently in space. So the px, py, and pz are what we would call degenerate orbitals because they have the same energy level, right? And so when we put this first one in here, we can't put a second electron in here because we want to maximize how many unpaired ones we have. So when we put the second one out here and the third one out here, and we still have one more, so that final one just gets paired up here. And so we have uh, two unpaired electrons in there. And that uh, satisfies <coughs> Hun's rule, we have the most unpaired, right? Because if we wrote it like this, then we'd have no unpaired electrons. And so that doesn't satisfy that rule. So we need to put this one here. So each box has to have one before any box gets two.